If you support Trump, you are not black. What, what I don't do have a comment. For? I don't. I don't comment on stupid shit. Okay, so let me ask you this: Is the Democratic Party, and this is this is my thoughts, because and, and, and since you won't say it, I'll say it. You won't comment on it. I thought it was ridiculous. I like. I'll again, comment I, on the Democratic I'm Party. I'm not commenting on stupid shit. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about a white man saying stupid shit. He showed you who he was. Now you know who the fuck he is. What are you going to do about it? Okay, yeah, I don't give a fuck about stupid shit. What are blacks going to demand of the party that they give over 90% of their loyalty to? It's just okay. that simple. Okay. So if now, I'm your boyfriend, on. you got to buy me a birthday gift, or I'm not your boyfriend. Okay, you get so what I'm saying? <laughs> What's going to happen if you don't get your wife nothing on her birthday? Listen, I could tell you a story about that. You don't like that, but you, you really, I could tell you a story about that because that just happened like about a, a two weeks. It, it just, Mike, it, it wasn't, the, it really wasn't the thing, man. Let like, me tell you what my wife did for me, man. My wife woke me up on my birthday, man. She bought me an $80,000 truck. Good for she, you. She just had Greg Street pull the truck up to my house. Now, what other woman can, what other woman stay in the chambers? You get what I'm saying? What other woman? So the Democratic Party, Where's our eighty thousand dollar truck? So you can okay. make sure nobody else stand a chance. Stop trying to stop trying to make us be scared of somebody else. And and we and here we are, we next to you, and we get nothing. We have no practical policy to pull us out of poverty. You haven't even promised us fifteen percent of marijuana. Like just like after prohibition, when they split up liquor into districts so that families and coalitions and clans kept the liquor business forever. That didn't include you, but it included the Kennedys, right? So it didn't include you. You left out of liquor. You taught Jack Daniel how to make liquor. You just getting your own liquor. You have an opportunity now to catch the wave of whatever's next in America. I don't care if it's weed or wind power or solar power or we want in. And if we don't want one, we don't get in. What the fuck we care about you getting in for? We already at the bottom. Our dick already in the dirt. What you going to tell us? It's going to get worse than Boeing Homes. It's going to get worse than the Bronx. It's going to get worse. You already at the bottom. So I'm just saying, ask for something. When they come knocking and peeping around and say, hey, why don't you, why don't you, don't you want to vote for us? Old Joe or Pro or whoever they got going that year. The question is, what do you have for us? We need something. We need better than what you've given. So let's start asking them brothers who served 30 years because of that crime bill. What would help rectify 30 years of your life? Let's help these children who've had to grow up without a father or without, or without proper schooling. What will help rectify your life? Let's ask these black women who you leaned on. You bribed them with policy to keep black men out of, out of their homes because they weren't married, so they can't have a man in the apartment. If they get Section 8, therefore their children don't have the type of male leadership that every other culture has deserved. What do you have for them now to stabilize their life and to give them? And if you don't have nothing, at least shut up and say, well, what can we do or what do you want? But don't come to us asking us for more. Don't come to us with the spirit of fear. You know, we done been through so much. What can we be scared of? You know, so I don't, I don't have anything to say to, for, or pro Joe. I don't have anything to say to the Democratic Party, but shame on y'all, we got to do better. And to the black legislators out there, you guys are the leaders of a community that control the linchpin to a party. You guys are the leaders of a community that can swing small southern states and towns from Johnston, South Carolina, where an intern from Outcast left interning for Outcast, went home to Johnston, South Carolina, ran for city council, and is now the mayor of Johnston, South Carolina. That black man is not even 40 years old. He's still in his 30s. That's what's possible to do in the South if you focus the political power you have here. Georgia has the most black legislators of any of the 50 states the most black legislators. So the question will become, what happens now? You know, you're going to have to work with people on the other side of the aisle, but if they want us to work with us, how are they going to get elected in Brunswick again after this if they don't have your vote? How's a Democrat going to win? You know, so I'm just saying, man, just get something for it. I'm going to step off my soapbox. I don't want to bore y'all, but I'm just saying, if you're going to give anybody that much loyalty and dedication, demand something from them or start your own thing like Stokely Carmichael. The Black Panther Party was originally a political party started in Alabama around the voting rights of one particular town. You can go check it out on YouTube. Y'all go check out what Stokely Carmichael did. You know, and, and be more like the people they don't talk about. Look up Fannie Lou Hamer and see what Fannie Lou Hamer did. Look up Lucy Parsons. 
Look up Eugene Debs. Go read these people that I've had to read. You know, go do your studies, man, and you'll be less afraid. So the question becomes to me, no matter what happens on this national election, who are you going to vote for locally? Who are you supporting locally? Who are the four candidates in your, because they got, they got elections going on right now in Georgia. So who are you going to vote for locally? And if you don't know, study. Get on your shit. Or stop bragging about and arguing about the national soap opera that doesn't affect you like your local school board member does. You're 100% right. You know, because my, the question that I was going to follow up with, which you ac absolutely destroyed and demolished, was is the Democratic Party taking our vote for granted? For me, um, you said it all, man. You, you, you really said it all. There's the, everything that was in my mind, you actually spit it out and you added a little bit to it. And, you know, my question is, really, what should we as a people receive for our vote? And how can we make sure they stick to it? They have to stick I don't know. to it. I don't what know what. Think. Different things are going to be needed in California than are needed in New York, than are needed in Georgia, than are needed in Tampa. So there, there are certain things on a big level that we should be guaranteed. We should be guaranteed at some point for this country some type of land. And I don't just mean land by way of reparations for slavery. I mean land that was stolen from black farmers during Jim Crow. We need some type of land program. Dr. King talked about that. Land lotteries and things like that, like they gave Scandinavian and Polish immigrants that were coming in to go to the middle of the country because they were used to the cold to build it up. So we need that. We need some type, and, and I'm going to tell you something. Education is fine, but all that give me free college education, whatever. Everybody doesn't want to go to college, and education ain't money. And in capitalism, money, money, money. When they founded this country, and Dick Gregory said this a lot, he said, them thugs didn't found this country to start no colleges. They found this country to get resources, to get the wealth of this nation, to make themselves wealthy on the world market to conquer. So we have to start thinking. So rather than try to answer that question, let me tell you this. We should be turning to our black economists and including but not limited to the ones you like. We should even go on the conservative side, people like Thomas Sowell, people like Walt E. Williams. And we should say, what if, 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 if just in case these Negroes win? Just in case, Mr. Williams, these Negroes win, what would, Amer what would be a fair cut for America to give us? Elijah Muhammad thought we should have states. There were members of the founding fathers, I'm forgetting the white man name, who thought we should give them the, their own land off the coast and give them 20 years or 100 years of assistance. But you owe something. So it might be different in Atlanta than it might be in Utah for black, than it might be in L.A. But we do need to come up with a five or 10-point thing that is definitely for us. And I think you have to have land. You have to have okay. some promise of money, you know, I, okay. I, and, and I'm just I'm a big, big believer in that. And, and I'm, I'm fond of any president that the, of the policy of any president that gives HBCUs any, atten any attention beyond learning here, like Tuskegee University, ones that teach agriculture, ones that teach trades and one that allow you to be your own ecosystem within your community. OK, so now here's what I think, because you, you, you said a lot there. I believe in reparation, but I think uh, reparations, I believe they should be handed out a little differently. I agree with you about money, but I am afraid that if you, and this is no disrespect and it's not jokes, even though it's going to sound funny. Batman scoop.